The following program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. If I'm beaten and raped in the state of Texas, I have to give birth to the baby of my rapist. If I am raped by my father, brother, or uncle and get pregnant in the state of Texas, I have to give birth to the baby of my family abuser. This new law is so draconian that I can be prosecuted for having an abortion and so can my doctors, friends, and family who advise me, or even the Uber driver who simply drives me to the clinic. This is madness. The same people who have been protesting and screaming my body, my choice when it comes to the COVID vaccine are now saying I don't have any control over my own body. Texas Republicans won't require a 12 year old girl to wear a mask in school that may save her life and the lives of other children, but they will force her to keep a baby regardless of how she got pregnant, including rape and incest. I am a woman and I have a constitutional right to make decisions for my own body. I am a woman and I have a human right to refuse to give birth to my rapist's baby. I am a woman. This is my body. I am a woman. This is the United States of America. I am a woman. You do not own or control my mind or my body. Shame on the men and women who pass this law and shame on anyone who sits in silence while women suffer and die because of it. very hard to summon the patriotism uh, that you know one would need in order to be motivated to go out and watch you know fireworks and you know do go to parades and stuff like that and I think in some cases it's probably something that a lot of people are probably feeling right now and you know there were protests uh, you know uh, during the weekend uh, you know, some of them, you know, got pretty rowdy, I guess. And uh, I had read somewhere that the, you know, the FBI has been sort of put it on alert uh, to keep uh, not just the pro-abortion, uh, I mean, not, not so much to keep just the anti-abortion people in, uh, monitored, but the pro-abortion people monitored too, because they suspect there'd be violence coming from them as well. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, my, my feeling about that is, well... Yeah, I mean, they can try to kind of keep things, you know, to a dull roar, but I mean, how how much, you know, do they want to really invest in controlling the public here? I mean, you know, because it seems to me like the more the police get involved uh, in these protests on e any any position here, whatever it is, you're, you're actually, you know, putting gasoline on the fire because people look at the cops these days as being uh, enemies. To stability because you know they've done you know we've had constant uh, issues with with various policemen over the years you know going above and beyond and over the line <laughs> uh, to to do their job and so they've kind of soured the public opinion about them so you know seeing them out there trying to stop 
protests and stuff like that, or at least control them. I mean, not stop them, but to control them. And some of them, you know, the cops will get rowdy, almost too rowdy. You know, hey, that's only going to spark more anger. And, you know, you know where that leads. I mean, Christ, I mean, you saw Kent State. I mean, you could bring in the National Guard and it wouldn't change anything. People will just get even more radical and more violent. <clears throat> okay. Which kind of leads me to the other topic here about the uh, Highland Park killing there that happened yesterday. Um, 21 year old kid, you know, just shows up there and starts shooting everybody with a friggin', uh, you know, AK-47. You know, you know, those things aren't cheap, those rifles. You know, I mean, think about it. I don't know how many people out there actually went and priced those things to at a store, but you know, they're not cheap to buy. And the fact that, you know, people these days are, are it's really tight out there for money. You know, people are really watching what they spend for the most part. <laughs> You know, if you're middle class or, or poor. And, you know, certainly buying a rifle and stuff like that would probably be considered wasteful spending at this time, you know, in our economy. <clears throat> Which doesn't seem to look like it's getting better considering the housing market is slowing down. Um, but I'm digressing here. The thing is, is that, um, you know, we have these kids 21 years old and sometimes younger, they managed to get their hands on these, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars friggin' worth of, of weapons, bullets and stuff. I mean, they're spending a ton of money. Where are they getting this cash from? I mean, it can't all be stolen property. Some of these people have to be buying it or someone's buying it for them, you know? Uh, and if, it's, if that's not the case, then the only thing left is that they're somehow stealing these things. So wouldn't that suggest to the Republicans who are pro-gun that we don't have sufficient enough uh, security on these firearms to make sure that they're safe, you know, in, in the right hands? I mean, if kids are able to easily get their hands on, because that seems to be the choice weapon in these mass killings is not just a pistol, but an AK-47, you know, or an AR-15. It seems to me like these are the kind of weapons everybody goes for if they want to start killing, you know, and you know, in, in big numbers. So, I mean, you would you would suspect that maybe, or you would assume maybe that the people who run these gun shops and stores, if somebody comes up to them and says, can I buy an AR-15? That should be red alert, red alert. Okay, this guy obviously wants this for something other than hunting. Should that person not be checked out? Okay, I mean, it's not like he guys that, well, can I have a, a, a revolver? you know, or a pistol or something like that. No, this is different. I mean, this isn't a six shooter or something like that. You're talking about a, a, a rifle with a high caliber uh, clip that goes in that, you know, with lots of bullets, can do lots of damage, okay? Uh, what the hell do they need to go hunting with that for? Anything they shoot at uh, with one of those things is gonna destroy the animal and, and whatever you were trying to get for, you know, meat or whatever, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna end up grounding the damn thing into beef by the time you you know you kill it because I mean it's just it's not designed to be something to use in that manner. Okay, it's designed to kill as many people as you can. Okay, in a time of war. All right, I mean, gone are the days of the flintlocks and stuff where they had to pull push down. Remember how they used to go through the barrel and put down all the gunpowder and the pellet and everything for every single shot. <laughs> Okay, those days are gone. I mean, they've long since gone. Okay, and over the years, they've been able to modify that to give the soldier or whatever a better a weapon to can uh, shoot without having to reload so often. And so, with that, they can do a lot of damage. You know, what a cannon could do back in the Civil War, one of these rifles can do now. Okay, an old cannon from that era can actually equal the damage that an AR-15 can produce if they were fired in the same direction at the same amount of people, you could do the same kind of damage right there without all the uh, ground property damage and stuff like that. You would just, you know, you'd do the same amount of deaths with one of those. That's that's how powerful that thing is, okay? And a lot of people, they just think this is a hunting rifle, like your grandfather's old shotgun. No, it's not, okay? You have to, you'd have to take people out to a firing range and show them what that thing can do in order for them to register up here how stupid it is to buy these things 
and to let people that young, like this kid here, have it. Okay, they've never seen what these things can do. A lot of these people arguing for Second Amendment and stuff like that, they've never seen anybody fire one of those damn things in their life. They don't know what the hell that is or what it does. Okay, and if they had, I mean, when they, when they see these things on TV that happen, these mass shootings, and they say how many people die, well, to them, that's a numbers. That's numbers, okay? They don't see the, the bodies. They don't see, you know, the actual damage that that thing can do, okay? So all they're getting are numbers, statistics. So it's very easy to throw a shroud over your eyes and just say, well, you know, let's blame the gunman, <laughs> okay? Sure, the gunman had the gun, but what's the common denominator in all these shootings? It's the gun. They gotta have that. You can't have a shooting without it, right? Doesn't matter if they were mentally deranged or if they were on something or drunk or whatever, okay? The bottom line is you put a gun in any of these people's hands, it's danger, okay? It's like driving around with a fucking tank with a barrel loaded and you're just waiting for somebody to do something wrong to push that button, okay? And people in this country have it in their mind that the minute they're faced with problems that they feel overwhelmed with, the best way to get rid of these problems is to shoot and kill. That's, a, you know, you don't see that kind of thinking a lot in other countries, but in this country you do. You know, we have a very short temper in America where, you know, you step in my way, okay, you might get away with it one time, but if you do it again, I'm going to kill you, okay? And they ain't saying that as an idle bullshit. They, they actually mean it, okay? You go into some parts of this country in the cities and stuff, and, and they won't even give you the first first uh, mistake free. They'll go right after you just right then, you know. And that's why, you know, we have such a, a huge amount of killings in this country is because people are, are just basically, they have no tolerance for anything. And how did we get that way? You know, how is it that we get that way? Is it because of the way we run our government, you know, that, you know, people have a say that, it, you know, in order for us to... Uh, use our government uh, to function in our government we have to be loud we have to be aggressive we have to be like that does that create a populace that's angry all the time probably you know probably does I mean maybe that's the reason why other countries have fewer uh, gun violent uh, gun deaths than we do okay we already got over 300 and some odd uh, mass shootings already and we're just in July here <laughs> okay we haven't even finished the year yet and we've already surpassed the rest of the freaking the freaking world in gun shootings by a mile but right now where the agitation level in this country is highest that I think it's ever been especially with the <clears throat> you know the uh, supreme or the extreme courts rulings and stuff lately and, and those that are yet to come I think people's patience and and agitation level is at a at a height that you know should concern the FBI uh, big time because people have had it and we've had it for a long time but it's showing in our society we've had it for <laughs> for 20 years or more okay we've had it for a long time but People have been sitting on this anger for, for many, many years. And it seems like it's it's finally reached the boiling point where people are really to really willing to take uh, life-changing measures, <laughs> to put it mildly, to do something about the aggravation they're feeling. Okay? And when our government minimizes the problem and doesn't take action really to do something about it then they're detached from the problem they're not really understanding what's going on out there and that's probably because they don't deal with the public enough as it is everything they know about is inside the walls of the Pentagon the Capitol and all that and that's it that's all they know they don't know the people out on the street they don't understand why there's these shootings are happening okay and and the truth of it is is I don't know if there'd be really any gun law that could ever be made that could actually put a serious dent in this problem because the problem rests in the people's uh, state of mind right now and a lot of people are struggling hard to make ends meet and they're and they're frustrated that you know they're seeing their government collapse before their eyes and they think things are out of control and there's no lifeline you know the you got a party that's out there trying to pull all those life lifelines away 
to make it harder for people who need them to survive. When you start doing shit like that, what do you think is going to happen to the population? It's going to become violent. Whether you're Republican or Democrat, you know, it's going to have a, it's going to have a consequence. And so, you know, the Republicans out there are saying, oh, we need to have more guns because they think that's the answer. Well, okay, fine. So let's give every, every person in this country three guns, okay? And then let's see if that works, if that really does work to stop gun crimes in this country. Let's see if that really does work. Let's everybody who has a, doesn't have one, go buy a gun. Everybody go buy a gun and see if their theory actually holds water. Of course, I know it won't, and you know it won't. But that's the only way it seems that the Republicans are going to have to get slapped in the face to understand that it doesn't, okay? Because nobody can be that quick on the draw to stop somebody before they shoot you, okay? There's always going to be a death. And if you've got a bus full of people armed to the teeth, okay, and one gunshot goes off, you've got, you know, a whole bunch of others starting to shoot at each other. And before you know it, everybody's shooting everybody on the damn bus, okay? And... You know, that doesn't solve a goddamn thing. It just brings in a busload of people in a casket. I mean, that's, that's all it is. That's all that's going to lead to. So instead of giving people the means to slaughter each other in just a matter of seconds, why don't we just take those weapons away from them, okay, and let them try and do the same kind of damage with their bare hands, okay, and find out how easy that is, okay? Okay, it's not that easy to kill as many people with your bare hands in just a few seconds than, than with a rifle. So why do we want to go to the rifle? Are we afraid to get punched in the face? Are we afraid, you know, to get knifed? I mean, are we that scared of each other that we just, you know, we have to be armed, that we don't like anybody? Does that, you know, does that really make any sense to you? I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it just, I feel like, you know, people hate each other, that we're all smiles in front of each other's eyes but when our backs are turned, uh, we just assume shoot you as look at you. Because I feel like that's kind of where we're headed right now as a country. And if we're headed that way as a country, then there's only one ending that the country can have. And that's total anarchy that leads to the uh, disillusion of the country at large. I mean, the government uh, would basically lose control of the population. And even with the military out there and what, what have you, uh, it would be a goddamn free-for-all. And the only people left standing would be the military. That would be the only population left, okay? All the civilians would be dead. And uh, so, unless this country really cares about not reaching that, that conclusion, and uh, what I see is, as the inevitable conclusion for this country, uh, then they need to really get serious about this problem because, like somebody had mentioned, uh, it, it spreads like a virus, and, and it seems like we're all infected. Whether we have a gun or not, we're all infected with that same mentality where we have no tolerance for other people, okay? That we get mad at the drop of a hat. And I hate to see what's happening in people's homes that are raising kids when your kid does something wrong and you have no patience to deal with, with, with the stress and aggravation. What are we doing to our kids at home? Are we beating the shit out of them? Are we putting guns to their heads or something? I mean, you got to wonder. Do you want a population like that raising children that are so easy to go get a gun and shoot people? You know? I mean, this kid's boy, he was 21 years old and already he was willing to get, throw away his life, his freedom, uh, to, uh, to what, he, you know, what he was doing, okay? And, you know, they, uh, he, he's been charged with seven counts of first-degree murder and he's looking at you know, life in prison without parole if he's convicted. Well, <clears throat> so what? Does that really help the problem? We've got another gunman, uh, another young man in prison for the rest of his life, but does that really change what, what is out on the streets? No. Okay. But we've been putting people away for years for doing this stuff, and it doesn't seem to register in anybody's heads, young or old, to curb their, their natural tendency, it seems, to go out and just take matters into their own hands. Okay. It doesn't seem to stop that. So what good is putting uh, anybody in prison, okay, if, 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 it, does, if it has no, no uh, bearing on the, the reality we're living in? What good is it? I mean, we're basically saying, yeah, so what? I get life in prison. You know, I get free room and board. I don't have to worry about living at home or, you know, whatever the hell's bothering him. Now he's, a, he's away from it. You know, it, for some people, it's an escape, I guess. I mean, it, it, 
I just I don't know what more we could do legally to stop that uh, these shootings from happening I really don't know all I know is that instead of, of focusing so much on the people that commit them why don't we go after the fucking tool that they always run to when they want to use it you know to, to, make these, to, to do these crimes why don't we go after that take that up take that door shut that door in front of them so they can't go in there anymore close it you know don't let them have the option anymore okay just no more no more sales of those fucking high powered rifles at all and the last time we put a ban on that the the uh, sh the shooting level in this country dropped considerably okay whether people want to acknowledge that or not especially those of you on the right uh, we had a, a, a much lower crime rate uh, gun crime rate <clears throat> when there was a ban on these uh, automatic rifles because when they were when that ban was allowed to expire uh, the rate went up uh, threefold in this country so we know that that is a one of the big sources of why we have these these mass killings is because people get their hands on these rifles and they just feel like uh, killing as many as they can and then sometimes shooting themselves at the end when they run you know when they're down to the last bullet so they don't have to answer for what they did or at least they think that okay uh, but I feel like there's there's a better way to deal with with this problem and we have to go after the uh, the sale of these guns, okay? Why can't these gun manufacturers sell these fucking things to, any, to anybody else in, outside the United States? Why do we have to sell them here? There's countries in this world that are at war right now, and they would be happy to take those guns off your hands if that's what it is, okay? Unless you're making so many that they you can't get rid of them all. I don't know, what, what's the story here? You know, why do they think Americans are the biggest customer? Why can't they see that, you know, right now in Ukraine, those people over there need those rifles. <laughs> you know, go sell them fucking things to them. Give those people the rifles. You know, Israel, they're always looking for guns. Sell that shit over there to them. You know, Christ, there's all kinds of hotbeds in this fucking world that could use those guns a hell of a lot more than we need them, okay? Because we ain't, we ain't here fighting a war. We're here fighting each other because we can't tolerate the guy next door anymore. Okay? We can't deal with the guy we work for the, or the school that we're going to. We can't deal with none of that shit. It's like we just don't want to do anything anymore because if you ask us to do something, it's, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. And if you get in my face again, I'm going to shoot you. I mean, that's the kind of attitude you get today with Americans. Okay? And if you give a guy like that a gun, what do you think is going to happen next? <laughs> All right. Let's go with commercial break and break back. Dear CEO, what's it gonna take for you to do something? Yeah, do you even care? Climate change affects all of us. This is your chance to do something good. Virtually every Democrat candidate has declared their unlimited support for extreme late-term abortion, ripping babies straight from the mother's womb right up until the very moment of birth. How about that? Uh, and that's to make sure that every American understands what today's Democrat Party stands for with respect to babies and with respect to the murder of babies. Uh, we have seen now in states across the country the introduction of legislation 
uh, that would enable the killing of babies. This is not about abortion. This is about killing babies after they are born. Uh, and it is the face of pure evil. And you've seen the leadership of the Democrat Party here on the Hill remain silent, remain silent while elected leaders, including the governor of Virginia, uh, described in very cold clinical terms uh, how he would, in fact, facilitate the murder of a baby that had already been born. Uh, and I want to say personally, as a mother, I'm the mother of five kids. I've delivered five babies. Uh, and the idea that, that we have to say today to mothers all across this country uh, that we've got to describe what the Democrats are doing is really horrific. And, and I want to ask mothers across this country to join with us to make sure that we don't see our maternity wards turned into killing fields, which is what the Democrats would do if we don't stop this. So we are absolutely dedicated to stopping this, dedicated to protecting the most vulnerable among us, which are the unborn. Uh, and, and the notion that we're having a debate about whether or not you should be able to kill babies is, uh, as I said, absolutely horrific and evil. And we will stand up against that. The Republican Party would like to welcome your children to school. Additional gun control legislation or executive actions are not appropriate. Uh, they're not going to pass. Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. Write for Pollution Booklet, Box 1771, Radio City Station, New York. Part of the entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I loved the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th, and St. John November 20th through the 26th. Ryan General, and uh, it's entitled A Tearful World War II Vet Says on His 100th Birthday, uh, The Current State of America Is Not What They Died For. Okay, 100 year old veteran still around, you know, and, and I think, you know, I'm, I've talked about before about how people who've lived more than 90 years have quite a perspective of this country. You know through the years as to how it began how it began when they were born and how it is now and what they feel about the country today as it as opposed to when they were kids and i've always said that i i think 
that our country is worse now than it ever has been, uh, really realistically. And um, here, this man here is, you know, feels the same way. And, and I'm, I'm going to read this here. Uh, a U.S. veteran who saw action in World War II lamented the current state of the country while celebrating his 100th birthday. Uh, Carl Sperlin Deckel, who spent his special day on June 29th with friends and family, broke down in tears as he told Fox 13 in an interview shared the day after that his fellow soldiers did not die in the war for what America has now pur purportedly become. Quote, people don't realize what they have the things we did and the things we fought for and the boys that died for it it's all gone down the drain our country is going to hell in a handbasket unquote Deckel said according to the silver star recipient he has lived a good life attributing his longevity happiness and good health to his appreciation for the small things i sincerely believe <coughs> quote i sincerely believe in this whole world that everything is beautiful unquote he shared quote, if I wake up in the morning and see these plants out here and all those flowers that are in there and the green grass on the ground, that's beautiful, unquote. While the native of Lakeland, Florida takes pride in all the awards and recognition he has received, has memories of his friends in the Marines who he lost in the war bring him to tears. Quote, we haven't got the country we had when I was raised, not at all, unquote, Deco claimed. Quote, nobody will have the fun I had. Nobody will have the opportunity I had. It's just not the same. And that's not what our boys, that's not what they died for, unquote. While Deco did not go into details, his dissatisfaction with the country's current state reflects the views of the majority of the population based on a survey by Pew Research Center published in January. The study reveals that 21% of Americans are satisfied with, quote, the way things are going in the country today, unquote, while 78% feel dissatisfied. The study also noted that the majority of the public view the country's current economic situation in a negative light. In addition to accelerating inflation, the U.S. also faces rises in mass shootings, hate incidents, and other violent crimes. Quote, I want the young kids to realize that freedom comes with a heavy price, unquote, Deckel said in an interview with Plant City Courier and Tribune in 2009. Quote, it isn't given to people out of the goodness of others. It's something you have to fight and sometimes die for, unquote. <clears throat> so, yes, that's, uh, you know, a veteran here who's seen, seen a lot in his hundred years. Okay, you, you go back a hundred years and... Um, so he's seen a lot of wars between then and now, okay? Because <laughs> World War II wasn't the last war. There had been a lot of fights. And I, I imagine after every war, he saw the country decay just a little bit more after every, every war that we got involved in. And to the young people, you know, who were born decades after the war and stuff like that, they don't really have that kind of, you know, uh, perception yet to see how the country devolved of course you know i'm 50 years old and from the time that i was born to now i can see that it has it has changed a lot okay some has been some nice changes okay but a lot of them have been bad changes unfortunately and because a lot of the times we we know these problems are there we don't seem to want to deal with them and that's our fault uh, we don't hold our, our elect, the elected candidates uh, over the fire, basically, to make sure that they do what they say they should do when they're campaigning. They all say that they promise us, you know, heaven uh, and all and paradise, okay, when they're running. But once they get in there, we don't really see any of these things come true. And I'm sure that's the same for Republicans as it is for Democrats, okay? No, none of these candidates ever produce the kinds of, uh, of results that are, we vote for. And yet we still keep doing nothing. We don't bitch to these people. We don't get out there and make our voices heard. We allow this, this you know, apathy to continue. And we expect the problems to correct themselves because we don't want to partake in government. We, want, we expect our elected officials to do it for us. 
But as you could see, our elected officials, when they're in power, they think for themselves and only for themselves. I mean, they just, they don't deal with what's going on in the public. If you don't complain and they don't hear it, they're not going to do anything. Okay. Uh, you know, what do they say? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Okay. Well, we're not squeaking <laughs> and we're not getting the grease. And, and the thing of it is, is if we, if we just don't and we sit on our butts every election and we don't, because we don't like the choices we have, if we just stay home and we don't vote, uh, you know, in a way that propels, you know, another four, eight years of, of uh, more dysfunction, okay? Um, and we go on complaining that government doesn't work. Well, we, it says in the Constitution, we are the, we're the government, we the people, okay? We can vote things, people out. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, politicians don't like really is always having to kowtow to the voters. Um, so that's why they do everything they can to go around that in order to get themselves elected whenever they need to. In other words, they meddle with the system to get themselves reelected. Um, they don't depend wholly on, on their speeches or their sales pitch. Um, they just look at, you know, can I buy this guy off? Can I buy this person off? Can, you know what I'm saying? That's how they look. That's why it costs so much fucking money to get a guy elected president in this country. It's because we spent so much time before that paying this one off, paying that one off, you know, you're just to get their support. And instead of going out on the street like they used to do, walking the pavement and going door to door asking for your support, they don't do that shit anymore, <laughs> okay? it's That's not the way these people want to get elected. They want to they take the easy way, okay? But the easy way has a cost, and that's costing the country, the rest of us, you know, uh, our freedoms, our rights, our safety, okay? Because of where these people are getting their money from, okay? That's the price we're paying when we, when we allow our government to run itself. And that's what we've been doing. And that's the reason why we don't like the government. It's not because so much of the people in there, it's because we're not invested uh, enough in uh, keeping an eye on it. And it's gotten out of hand. And I, really, it's like, you know, if you've got a car that's constantly breaking down, okay, uh, and you're constantly got it in the shop, and you're spending all kinds of fucking money, good money after bad, trying to keep that thing on the road, uh, <clears throat> aren't you going to want to get rid of it and trade it in for a new car? If you get, you know, if you're able to, I mean, wouldn't you want to do that? Of course you would. That's what our government is right now. It's that damn car that just keeps breaking down over and over again, and it just keeps getting worse. And all the gadgets are breaking down and the damn car, you can't trust it for shit. Okay, you, if you want to take it on a trip, you got to worry, is this thing going to make it? <laughs> you know, what's going to happen? Uh, and so, if we as Americans feel like that about our government, then maybe it's time we trade that government in on something new. Okay, maybe we need to get rid of what is the government and replace it with something better. But we have to be smart about that because right now, what we got, we got elements out there like QAnon, you know, Proud Boys, and other, you know, in the American Nazi Party, all these other factions out there, these cults, that would love to put plant their flag in an empty, empty capital, okay? And those are the people we have to watch and keep our eye on, because if we try to make, create a new government over what is, okay, those people are going to want to interject their ass into it, and, and put and muddy up the waters yet again. So the new government will be the same as the old government, okay? <laughs> you know, uh, and those are the people we have to keep an eye on because their interests are not for a better country. Their interests are for a better world for them to live in and the rest of us to stay the hell out of, okay? That means some of us out there uh, who they don't like would probably be you know, exported out of the country against their will, you know, that's not a country I want to live in. I mean, that's, they do that shit in Russia, okay? And I wouldn't want to live there, and I don't think anybody else watching this would either. But that's the kind of mentality they have because they're warped. Their, their way of thinking is warped, all right? They were raised in a bigoted household for the most part, and their bigotry to them is right because, hey, dad taught me that, mom taught me that, okay? How can they be wrong? Even though they're constantly told that they're, what they're thinking and saying is, is, is uh, nasty and, you know, 
racist and everything. They don't care because it's okay for in their family for them to talk that way, and that's all they need for approval to just keep right on keeping on. Okay, so uh, those people we have to keep out of the system if we ever ever come to a day where we have to consider replacing what we have for a broken government with uh, a new government uh, uh, that works better for our needs okay um, we certainly don't want to get rid of our freedoms uh, the way the Supreme Court's been taking them away now uh, we'd like to have them back and we certainly don't want extremist thinkers sitting in any part of our government okay like we got those uh, six justices in the court there that are extremist thinkers every one of them lied to get there okay so they cheated getting the seats that they got all right um, which is basically all the Republican Party these days is really about is cheating in any fucking way they can to hang on to their power because they're the minority <clears throat> even when they're sitting in all seats of power in the government they're still the minority because the majority of the country doesn't agree with the ideals of the current uh, state of mind in their GOP okay and we really can't call them the GOP anymore because they're not the old party they're not the grand old party they're the radical new party you know <laughs> uh, and it's run by <clears throat> people who if you don't follow what they want uh, they'll come after you with a big stick okay that's what they are I mean that's what that that's what this group is being run by because none of these people like QAnon and the Proud Boys are people who are willing to sit at a table and debate issues. No, it's their way or the highway. That's what you get from, from groups like that now. And, and if the rest of the party doesn't follow suit, then that party suffers. And none of the Republicans want to suffer. They want to keep what they got. And if that means they have to talk like Donald Trump or, 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 or DeSantis in Florida, then that's what they'll do. If that's what makes these people get out and vote, then they'll, they'll say anything like Mitch McConnell, okay? You know half the shit he's doing, he doesn't probably agree with, but he's gotta do it because he wants to keep his ass as the, the head master there in the fucking party, okay? Even though he ought to be out, he ought to be out of that fucking job. He's older, he's too old to be there for one thing, and he's no good for nobody, okay? Because he can't stand up, he's got no balls, he just, you know, he can't, he can't keep his party in line. It's gotten out of his control, and he just, he's useless now. He's a relic um, of a different time. And he really, they really need to get rid of him. I don't care how they do it, but his days as a, as a senator are over a long, long time now. But, <clears throat> you know, it's time that people really understand and look at themselves and say, you know, we can bitch about the government all the time, but we are the government. And if our government isn't working, it's because we're not working. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. We're not voting. We're not taking politics as serious, uh, a serious thing. We're turning it into a uh, pro wrestling uh, fantasy here, a circus, if you will, of you know of uh, uh, wannabe Hollywood stars. <laughs> okay, uh, and people over the years have turned it into that. People like Rush Limbaugh, who would get on the radio and make make light of all the things of the day that were troubling people. You know, making fun of folks and, you know, coming up with wittis funny witticisms and, you know, and, and, and crazy songs uh, to pick on people, you know. Uh, and, you know, it's just after a while, people will, will have soaked that up, you know. And, <laughs> you know, and now this is where we are after a lot of these people have passed away now, some from age and some from the COVID-19, a lot of these uh, blowhards have passed away and they've left the country behind in shambles you know so what did they get out of it what are the money i guess is really the only reason that that i can think of that they uh you know because limbaugh did not live poor okay he had a nice big house here with a radio station there t attached to it you know and <coughs> and uh uh he lived in a in a special community where you know it's uh exclusive only to certain people uh, so these people live well, these these big mouths on the radio, and uh, they guaranteed a country that would be in shambles by the time you know they were ready to retire, and that's what they did. They ruined the country for 20 years, 
uh, telling people propaganda and out and out lies. And uh, now this is where we are. We've got a whole faction of our population that have been swayed by decades of bullshit. And now they don't know what the hell the truth really is anymore. They just don't. They don't know what it is because the other side, the Democrat side, who's been telling you know people that you know they're wrong, uh, they've been already been told that if the Democrats telling you they're, they're that you're wrong, then they're already uh, losing the fight, and you know they were wrong all along. So you don't know say it's like the the lie you believe first is the lie that sticks in your mind, you know, and it's just. For them, they 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 bought the lie, and now the truth doesn't matter to them anymore because they think the truth is the lie, even though their truth is a lie. <laughs> okay, and that's how that's how Republicans have dealt with their base on a very very dishonest and lopsided way. Okay, they don't trust their voters. Hell, they don't even like them. You know, they don't even like them, and and in most cases, they don't even like the people that go around buying guns either. You know, they call them hillbillies and stuff like that. That was that was caught on a, on on a friggin' phone call, uh, recorded right off a conversation. You know, people laughing about these the, the people, the NRA members. You know, they call them hillbillies. <laughs> you know, so they don't think any more about these people, and yet these Republicans, as as crazy as they are, will believe that they're they're respected and they're wanted. You know. They're not. They're just. They're just not. And you know. And unfortunately, the only way they're ever going to find out that that they've been lied to is when they fall flat on their face uh, from something that they believed in wholeheartedly, and come to find out uh, they got taken. You know, not enough of them have figured that out yet, uh, but they will. You know. And I think these hearings, you know, with Trump and all that stuff, is really showing a lot of Republicans just how stupid they were. Uh, to believe Donald Trump, I know it's it's I know it's hurt, it's hurt the Republicans, you know, in in a way that the hearings are, are publicized on television um, because uh, the evidence is compelling, you know, especially you know from certain people who have told their side of things and their story and what they witnessed, uh, and the fact that you know Donald Trump is already blowing his top about people coming forward and saying things. I mean, it all it all paints a very guilty-looking picture there. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, from what we already heard, he ought to be arrested, you know, Trump. He shouldn't even be sitting out free. He would be considered a flight risk right now. If 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 we was arrested and we had to go f to go to bail or something, I don't see how any judge could say, well, we'll release you on bail uh, for ten billion dollars or whatever, because um, this guy he's capable of, of just running and you know what I'm saying, running away from his uh, from his problem. I mean, you can't trust this guy. They won't try to do something stupid, okay, in order to avoid uh, dealing with his, with his crimes, you know? <laughs> so anyway, like, like I said, it's, it's, been a, it's been a terrible couple of months and celebrating the 4th of July yesterday, just, it, it's, it soured my stomach. I just didn't feel like going out there. Uh, and I know I wasn't alone in that. I know a lot of people stayed home. Uh, and I just feel like that, you know, that celebration now was sort of a, a bygone celebration that we really can't celebrate anymore because those days are gone. This is the freedoms that we fought for, you know, the people that went in the military to, to defend and all that, uh, we lost it from the very people we were we were protecting what we swore to protect they're the ones that took it away from us not the not the enemy over the ocean you know it was never them that was going to destroy our country it was going to be us you know inside the country that would destroy it you know and unfortunately you know this poor veteran here uh and, and here here is the picture of him here in the pic uh let's see if i can yeah that's the poor veteran right there who uh he said, you know, this country ain't the same anymore. And he's right, it ain't, you know. People don't treat each other the same way anymore in America. Especially not the way thing we, uh, people were back in those days of World War II. Um, there was true patriotism in our country back then. And uh, today, it's just, it's every man for himself and kill everybody who isn't on your side. You know, that's basically what it is.
Okay, so that's it for today, and I hope everybody has a great rest of the week. So please uh, keep your ears open for any local COVID-19 news. Subscribe and comment on my uh, uh, videos here when you have the chance. And uh, please treat each other better than you know we have been. Okay, uh, it goes a long way. It's good karma when you when you learn how to control your uh, instinct to want to thrash and throttle people. Okay, uh, there's respect to be gained from a person who can put his uh, bad emotions in check. <laughs> okay, so just just remember that. All right, there's nothing wrong with biting your tongue. You know in situations or just walking away they the adult walks away the kid stands and fights you know so take care everybody talk to you later